What's up, everyone? Coach Elliot here. I'm not just coaching athletes for Leadville this year. I'm racing it myself. And one of the biggest questions I get from my athletes is, how do I prepare for racing at 10,000 feet if I live at sea level and I'm unable to spend time in Leadville before the race? The answer, heat training. And today, I'm going to show you exactly why this works for altitude and give you a five-week plan to do before Leadville or your next altitude race. If you need a refresher on heat training in general and the benefits, check out Coach Frank's video from last week where he dives into this. Let's get into the details. So why does Leadville crush unprepared athletes? Leadville sits at 10,000 feet above sea level and the course climbs to over 12,000 feet where there's about 25% less available oxygen than sea level. That means your power decreases significantly about 1% for every 1,000 feet you go up, your heart rate spikes, and your energy demands increase as well, all before the race even starts. But here's some good news. Heat training mimics many of the adaptations you'd normally get from altitude, and with the right protocol and using a tool like the core body temperature sensor, you can increase your body's oxygen carrying capacity without ever leaving sea level. A 2024 study by J.D. Perriard et al. showed that heat acclimation can provide performance-enhancing adaptations that carry over into hypoxic or high-altitude environments. One of the key adaptations is an increase in hemoglobin mass, which boosts your blood's ability to deliver oxygen to working muscles, similar to what happens during altitude acclimation. However, these changes don't happen overnight. Research suggests it takes at least four weeks of consistent heat training for hemoglobin gains to begin. While heat training doesn't fully replace altitude acclimation, it creates what's known as a cross adaptation. It increases plasma volume, hemoglobin, and overall cardiovascular efficiency, which makes it a powerful tool for sea level athletes preparing for races at altitude. Let's chat about this five-week heat acclimation protocol now. For the next five weeks, I'll be using a core body temperature sensor that clips onto your heart rate monitor. The sensor backwards calculates core temperature by measuring skin temperature and monitoring your heart rate response. This piece of technology is crucial to monitoring and tracking your progress. Before we dive in, though, here's the most important safety note. Heat training works by raising your core body temperature, but you do not want to exceed 103 degrees Fahrenheit or 39.5 degrees Celsius. That is where the core sensor becomes key to make sure that you do not exceed that point. For a thorough heat acclimation protocol, core recommends five sessions a week, up to 75 minutes of heat training per session, for five weeks in order to become fully heat adapted. Remember that rule of five, five times a week for five weeks. Now let's dive into what these sessions look like and how to incorporate them into your training. Scientific literature suggests that the mode of heat training, whether passive or active, does not really matter in short time trial performance studies. While there's absolutely advantages to active heat training when racing in hot environments, like training gut digestibility, Leadville is usually not an environmentally hot race. The average temperature in Leadville in August is about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And because of this, we can use a blend of active and passive heat training. Here's what an example block could look like. I like to layer higher intensity days with passive heat training after workouts and implement a bit of active heat training on my lower intensity days. So think endurance in zone two. For passive heat training, I'll do my workout on the bike and head right to the sauna or use a hot bath while my core temperature is already elevated from my workout. I'll monitor my internal body temperature with the core sensor and then remove it right before the sauna. And I'll aim to spend 20 to 40 minutes in the sauna. And afterwards, I can input all of my data into the core app to get my heat training score for that session. For active heat training days, these could be lighter zone two endurance rides. 
I'll either bring some additional clothing with me and overdress in the final 45 to 60 minutes of the ride. Arm warmers and a vest are always really easy to pack. And this helps elevate my core temperature into range for those final miles. Another option for this is riding the trainer and overdressing, which could consist of adding a long sleeve thermal jersey or using a Tyvek heat suit and turning off the fan while riding indoors. I've also been using a similar strategy, but when I finish a ride, I put a long sleeve jersey on, overdress a little bit and hop on the rollers for about 30 minutes into the, in the garage. Another important reminder is that heat training is an added stressor. You will not be able to train normally and heat train. It's really important to bring the overall training load down. If you have any questions about how to incorporate this into your training and balance the intensity, ask a coach like myself and reach out. So if you're training for Leadville or any high altitude race, but live and train at sea level, heat training is one of the most effective tools you can implement. By consistently raising your core temperature through active and passive heat exposure, you can achieve many of the cardiovascular and hematological adaptations you'd normally get from living at altitude. While you won't get the full respiratory adaptations of altitude, by increasing your plasma volume and boosting your hemoglobin, that can go a long way towards offsetting your performance that decreases in addition to racing at 10,000 feet. The best part, you don't need to spend weeks acclimating or sleeping in an altitude tent. You just need some heat and a way to measure your core temperature. For sea level athletes, that's a game changer and that will significantly improve your Leadville finish time. Thanks for watching. I'm Coach Elliot, and let me know if you have any questions and hope to see you at Leadville.